Hi guys, it's Cindy Leach, your polymer clay tutor, and today's PCT product demo, I'm going to show you how to use a UV epoxy resin by epoxyjewelry.com. And it's also known as Ultradome, and it is a really cool UV cured resin that I've been using for years and really love. Um, now, they've just come out with a new bottle, so if you've bought it in the past, it looks a little bit different. And I really like it. It's um, now a UV resin, you use a UV lamp to cure it. So um, it only comes in one step. So th what's neat about this bottle here is that um, it's, it's dark so that the UV light doesn't set it while it's in the bottle. And it also has a really fine tip that you can use for pouring out onto your pieces. Now let me just show you first what a UV resin looks like. Um, I've got a bunch of polymer clay pieces here in, done in a bunch of different finishes. Some are thicker pieces where I've just put the UV resin on the top layer and I've added it after I've drilled the holes. And so these holes are nice and strong because of that UV coating on there. I've also d done it on really thin pieces like this uh, blend and switch piece here, a blend and switch technique that, tutorial that I teach. Um, it's got resin on both sides, so if it's this thin, you can tell that the polymer clay was very thin, but it makes it really tough and uh, shiny and beautiful and domed. Now, I've also got it on a little really paper thin um, die cut piece here, and it's uh, domed on both sides with the resin. I've got it on a little bit bigger piece here. Uh, this is a Mocha Magani technique, and the color just really comes to life when you've got that gorgeous uh, UV resin on it. And then I've also got it in a bezel here. This is the faux labradorite technique and it just makes it look beautiful. And then also on the um, faux batik technique. So obviously you can use it on any surface. Uh, I t because it's quite a thin resin, it works best on the flat pieces and it domes, it's a self-doming uh, type of resin and it is a one part so that it's really easy to use the the only downside is that you have to spend money on the oven or the UV lamp to cure it. Um, it has some other uh, benefits as well. I've got a couple of pieces of of pro uh, of the faux batik technique with other products on it and some of the downsides to other resins and products that give a lot of gloss is that in this case this one is the glossy accents and there's pull it pulls away from the side it puckers in the middle this one here was covered I don't know if the camera's picking it up but uh, this was covered with the uh, magic gloss a UV resin and it pulls from the side really bad um, but that's what this UV epoxy doesn't do at all. It doesn't pull from the side and it's very easy to use. Let me just show you how to use it. I'm just going to take one of my uh, pieces here. You always want to use the ones that have been sanded. Oh, that one's not. Sanded first. The crisper the edge on the piece, the nicer, the higher the dome you can get on it. Now, um, I've got this little rubber mat uh, that I got at Michael's uh, for doing resin on. It's great because it keeps it up off the surface, especially if you've got a super, super thin piece. I don't like that it's flexible. Um, there are some products out there for, for doing resins that are stiff and with the little feet on it, that would be better. But this is nice too, because if anything spills over, you can always um, clean that up easily. The thing about this particular lamp now this is a uh, uh, 32 watt lamp. It's got four bulbs in it, four of the nine watt bulbs. And it's much more powerful than those nine watt, uh, you might see them at Michael's, the sort of the white one. I have one, but I couldn't find the little lamp. Um, but it only has one bulb in it. And it's just meant for your fingertips. Uh, it's just not as powerful as these uh, 30, 36 watt, actually 36 watt, sorry. But um, this is a much better one and it's got a tray that slides out in the bottom. So what I do is I slide out the tray, put this little mat on the top, and then I can just slide this back into the oven. Or because it's the bottom like that, you can set it right over top of pieces and it works great that way. 
we're just going to do it this way. And what you're going to need to do is just take the resin and you just go around the outside edges of your piece kind of first and then you can go towards the center You can put quite a bit on there it doesn't uh, flow it's got a good surface tension to it and it doesn't just pour off the sides and I'm just going to take like a sharp uh, little pin or wire or whatever and pull it out to the edges of my piece and then like I said before it doesn't when it cures it doesn't pull away from the edges as long as you've um, spread it right out to the edge so just make sure that you've gone around and done that and make sure I always be careful to make sure that I've done it perfectly once you've cured it it's it's cured so you can always add another layer if you need to now I've got a little bubble in the center actually a couple of them what you need to do is just take a lighter this happens to be a barbecue one with a big long handle and I'm just gonna light it I just want to see if I can't see it oh there it is and you just wave it over the top and those bubbles will just pop so you really want to make sure that you've got all the bubbles because the bubbles will cure in there and I usually let it sit for a little bit just to see if any new bubbles will come up sometimes if you've got like one one thing you want to do like I've done this straight on a piece of uh, polymer clay that's clean and everything but if you're going to put it into metal or anything like that or um, put it on a paper you want to seal the paper first and make sure it's completely sealed before you put the resin on and then with um, metal and that kind of thing you want to make sure it's clean so you want to wipe it out with uh, rubbing alcohol and make sure there, there's no oils or grease or things like that if you glue something into say you glued uh, a piece of polymer clay into this metal bezel what you want to make sure is that there's no big gaps between the um, the piece and the bezel you also want to make sure that that glue is dried really really well because with the UV resin it needs the light to get at it before it can cure and so if there's big gaps here the um, the UV resin will stay soft because the lights like if it runs down in between and then the lights can't get at it to cure it it'll stay soft and then the top will be hard or if the glue is uncured it may gas off and give little bubbles and things like that up around the edges so that's where you may run into any problems but a simple piece like this is just like dead simple way easier than mixing two parts and that kind of thing so I'm just going to do a quick check to make sure it's all pulled out to the edges looks like I missed a little spot you want to make sure it's on a level surface and that there's no bubbles or lint or hair cat hairs and that kind of thing in there and then you just slide it in to your oven and this one has a, a two minute timer that you can just push to start and that's for curing your fingernail if you're using UV gel and stuff that's what these are actually used for uh, curing uh, fingernail polish um, but this one also has a timer that you can just leave on full so I would leave that on and then you leave it for 20 minutes I like to throw it in a little bit longer um, you know how I like to make sure that things are really cured but 20 minutes will usually do it 20 25 minutes you just leave it in there and it gets like rock hard actually that's the wrong one this one but it just it's rock hard you can um, you can sand it say you had it around the edges you can sand it off you can buff it up you can if it's sticky like if there was some edges where uh, it had dripped underneath say for example and it was uncured you can actually just clean it up with some rubbing alcohol and uh, you can wipe off any stickiness with that but this is a beautiful resin that I if I had more time to spend I would just be covering everything in, in the UV resin I just really really love it so um, yeah you can get it from Terry Morris he's um, I've known him for quite some time he carries uh, the epoxy jewelry uh, epoxyjewelry.com he carries the um, the resin he also carries a bunch of uh, bezels and things are very inexpensive he has some molds and a lot of other neat little things there that he carries 
So I hope that was helpful for you. A lot of people have been bugging me about finding out what that pink thing was on my desk. <laughs> So finally, you know what it is and um, you can check out Terry's site. And if you did like this video, do let us know if there are any um, other ideas, products you'd like me to test, things you don't know how to do, uh, challenges, things like that. Leave those in the comment section below as well. And we also have a great resource over at polymerclaytutor.com where you can use the search box there to find answers to all of your polymer clay questions. We'll see you next time and bye for now.